Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the Jeremy Scott Fitness Podcast Radio Show. Coming to you on this Saturday, June the 19th, 2021. Hopefully it finds you staying safe and staying sweaty all at the same time. I'm in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona, and it's June, and so I'm definitely sweaty. It's about 117 degrees here right now, and I'm sitting in a wet diaper, and it is not a good look at all. I got the air on, but man, nothing is helping. It, uh, it's just hot. They say it's dry heat. Um, but it feels like God turned on the oven to preheat in Arizona and said, hey, we're going to wait till you guys are all cooked, and I'm going to turn this shit off like in September. But uh, here we are. Uh, I'm trying not to complain. I'm okay with it. I'm going to leave here, go in my pool, which is probably like bath water, but it's still way better than being in Minnesota and having to be negative 17 degrees. Because last time I checked, you don't have to shovel sunshine. And I am a fan of sunshine, most definitely. So uh, I'm going to touch on an older podcast here um, and off of a little thing I found on Facebook. It just popped in my head quick and I want to throw it out to you guys because I think it's important. Um, the message overall, some of you guys have maybe heard an older podcast we did uh, titled Love Your Body, I believe. And I think we did that, man, it had to been shit, probably like three years ago now. So for some of you guys, maybe you've never heard it, I'm going to rehash a little bit of it and add um, a couple of Cliff's notes, but it's just a good, powerful message, even if it's been three years since you've uh, heard us talk about it. Before I kick into the podcast, reminder, we're brought to you by my homies at Athletic Greens, the one something I take every single day. I never miss it. I travel with these packs. I was just in San Diego a couple of days ago, took the travel packs with me. I just rip one, throw it in a little shaker bottle with some water, slam it, and I have all my micronutrient needs covered for the day, especially when you're on vacation and traveling with friends and family like you do in the summertime. It's a great way to ensure you're giving your body everything it needs because you're probably not eating on your normal, you know, regimented schedule. Maybe you are, uh, but even for me when I travel, it, it's tough to do for sure. So if I'm like out having fish tacos or something, that's not in my normal routine. So I'll take the greens to make sure I'm getting in everything that I need. And I'm not gonna travel with 14 different pills. I just take the packs and I'm good to go. Side note, it's the best tasting greens on the planet. All you kids listening to me, you used to drink Jägermeister or Mickey's Ice House 40s or Warm Bush Light or Hawkeye Vodka, whatever your shit was. And that stuff is disgusting and it's terrible for you. These taste way better and it's good for you. So if you want to get some athletic greens, right now I can give you a year supply of free vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first order. The site, athleticgreens.com slash Jeremy Scott, will get you your athletic greens for the month, plus five free travel packs, plus a full year supply of vitamin D3 with order one. And if you're on the fence, you've heard me talk about this a hundred times, or maybe you're new to the podcast, you've never heard me ramble on, I can get you a pack to try for free. Shoot us a message on the website, fill out the contact page, email us, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you guys are listening and watching to this. We will have Monica send you a pack right to your front door. You can try it. You'd be like, wow, it actually tastes amazing. Then get hooked up with all the free stuff my gift to you guys. Again, the site, athleticgreens.com slash Jeremy Scott to get 75 basically whole food vitamins and minerals into your life with one simple drink. And you can throw away all the other bullshit pills you're taking because you don't need them anymore. Now, uh, the original podcast I did was called Love Your Body, which I'm going to take some snippets from that. But I just happen to be scrolling today and I gotta get out of here. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm sweaty, I'm a disgusting monster. But I thought this was important, especially for a lot of you guys here who struggle with body issues, um, by dysmorphia, bigorexia, whatever your thing is, or, or just a person who has a negative self image. And what I'm driving at is, and I talked about this before on the, the Body Dysmorphia podcast, you look in the mirror and you focus on the things that you don't like. You focus on the things that are less than ideal. They're not toned enough, they're not lean enough, they're not uh, ripped enough, maybe it's a little bit, uh, you know, they're cellulite, or you're a little bit chubby or flabby or fluffy, or whatever the fuck term you wanna use. And you focus on that and you stare at the things you hate about yourself over and over and over. And you probably do it 32 times a day. Or every time you get out of the shower, you bend, you twist, you move, you're like, oh, my stomach's too fat, my legs are gross, my arms are flabby, whatever your thing is. And everybody's done that. You get out of the shower, you look in the mirror, and you're like, oh, this sucks. And you hyper-focus on it over and over and over and over again. That's a sickness. And then 
it gets to the point where you do it for so long and so often it becomes worse in your brain than it is in reality and you think it looks terrible and you hate it and you're disgusted by it and you think everybody notices it side note nobody notices it nobody gives a shit you're not that important and i don't mean that in a negative way you guys are all important and you're amazing but nobody notices if you have a zit on your face and so nobody gives a shit if you have cellulite on your hamstrings or your butt is a little bit thicker or your stomach is a little bit fluffy no one fucking cares they don't we all have our own problems and our own shit to deal with we are not concerned with what is going on with your body so just take solace in that and you can work healthy and happily to change it if you don't like it over time but don't be your own worst enemy don't beat yourself up over the things that are wrong with your body appreciate it for how fucking amazing it is and all the awesome stuff that it can do not the few things it can't do and not the couple of things that are less than ideal in terms of aesthetics with how you look because if you're focusing on one or two things that suck there's 500 other things that are fucking amazing and you have to do that it's like when i send an email and people will talk shit to me about the emails we send because i send three emails a week every week for 11 years sometimes i'll have misspellings i don't know how to use punctuation for shit now i'm gonna send out an email that has a thousand words in it if 999 of the words are perfect and one of them is spelled wrong just deal with it. Don't send me a message and tell me I'm a moron. That's how I look at it. I'm, I want to try to be as perfect as I can with that stuff, but the reality is it's not going to happen. And I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on all the things that are right, and then I can work next time to spell there, there correctly. You get where I'm going with this? You have to do the same thing with your body. And so as I'm scrolling on Facebook today, I go through and I just, we're posting in our groups, we're updating them, and I see this message and um, this girl, Michelle uh, Lobano, posted it. And I think Randy Boson, if I'm reading that right, and Allie Vernon had threw this out there. And it's a picture of a thinner girl in like a black uh, tank top and shorts, and then a bigger girl um, in a black tank top and shorts. And the phrasing goes like this, and I quote, being thin is okay, not being thin is okay, having curves is okay, not having curves is okay, Bashing someone for their body type is not okay. Making assumptions about someone based on their body type is not okay. Imagine if we created a world where we put as much energy into building each other up as we did into judging and being cruel. All of us should be able to love who we are. Thin or fat, we're all worthy and we just, we just have this one life and it's too precious not to live joyfully. And that's kind of the end of the quote. I think a lot of you guys can resonate with that. I'm not into, uh, you know, fat shaming people. I'm not into, you know, berating people for being super fit. I don't give a shit what people want to do. As long as you're happy and you're healthy, I'm okay. Now, obviously, if you're 600 pounds and you're like, I'm super happy, that's fine. That's not healthy, though. We can just, we can come to agree on that. If you want to be 600 pounds and you think it's sexy and you think you feel great and you think it's the best path for you to be successful and happy in life and live, live to your 90s, then be your 600 pounds. But I think science in the medical community would disagree with you and say that's not a healthy way to do it. And in terms of overall longevity, you're not going to be here very long. But outside of that range, if you're a person and you're, you're 200 pounds and that's a healthy range for you, then be 200 pounds. If you want to be shredded and ripped to the bone, that's cool too. If you want to be a person who's got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of fluff on your body, but you feel sexy as hell and you can move and you're in a healthy weight range, that's okay too. There's no judgment there from anybody and there shouldn't be. And we don't know everybody's story. Or sometimes people are just lazy, they don't want to exercise and, and they overeat. For sure, that happens, obviously in America. But sometimes it's, they're coming back from cancer treatment. They're battling hormones. They just had, you know, three kids in like three years. There's all, there's all these circumstances that come. It's like, who are we to judge? Or maybe you're just, you're genetically, you're just built. You're the person who eats, you know, two cookies and you gain 14 pounds. Or you're the person who eats three cookies and you lose two pounds. Like we all have a different set of genetic cards we're dealt. But we have to be kinder to each other on the journey and just lift each other up and help each other be healthier and move forward if we want to be. 
And that's why I like to phrase in there, imagine if we create a world where we put as much energy into building each other up as we did into judging people and being cruel. And I don't think that just applies to body type. That applies to everything across the board. And obviously, I go on the body stuff because this is what we do for a living. We coach health and fitness and kind of everything around it. Which brings me to the original post in the podcast we did called Love Your Body. We did this in sometime in like 2019. So at this point, we're, you know, two and a half years later. It's a refresher for you guys. And I wanted to say like, you know, your body, it's the thing that you wake up in every single day. And for most of us, you know, it, it's a gift that we have it. And it's beautiful and it's strong and it's powerful. And it's this high functioning, baddest fucking machine that we can travel through life in. And your body is amazing whether you realize it or not. Now, is it perfect? No, nobody's is. Everybody has some issues, whether it be internally, externally, and if you don't today, you will tomorrow, and if you don't tomorrow, you did two weeks ago. There's always things we have to do to manage it, um, you know, to take care of it, but we have to really appreciate it. You really do. It's meant to be cared for, it's meant to be loved, and understand it is the most important thing that you have your brain and your body and your mind and your health and everything wrapped up without that you you literally have nothing but in the world today that we live in with social media um, and TV and, and magazines that we're, we're flooded with these images you know and we become conflicted you know with our body and with our idea of, of what it should be and oftentimes we overanalyze and we obsess and we become depressed about how our body looks and how it's perceived by the people around us. You know, and we get real critical. Um, are we too tall? Are we too short? Are we too skinny? Are we too fat? Do we weigh enough or do we weigh too much? Do we have abs? Are we the right dress size? Is our butt too big? Is our butt too small? I can go on, but it, it, the list is endless of the bullshit stories we tell ourselves and, and how we question based on the Instagram-ish comparisons. And the perception of, of what an ideal body is has literally been created around unrealistic ideals and metrics by which we judge ourselves and by which we judge others. And side note, if you are doing that, please stop fucking doing that. It's not realistic. Even a lot of the people you follow and see and watch on Instagram don't really look like that most of the time or a good chunk of the year. Some of them do, some of them don't. but. You don't have their parents, you don't have their genetics, it's not what you do for a living. The juice probably is not worth the squeeze. You just gotta bowl in your own lane and do what's best for you and your body and your lifestyle and your happiness. Do not compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 15. It's a losing fucking scenario in everything you do in life, especially when it comes to how you look physically. Because of this, a lot of people develop, you know, like, these kind of attachment disorders or even like these uh, like body dysmorphia, you know, about our external image and what we see in the mirror. And oftentimes we're driven to greedily obsessing about looking like a certain movie star or celebrity or fitness person, you know, on Instagram saying things like, I wish I had abs like them. I'd love to have her butt or her legs or his shoulders or insert whatever the, the coveting thing is you're chasing. We do that. And that is not healthy to do. So if you're doing it again, please stop everybody. It's an endless comparison that can lead to the rejection of your own gifts, your own talents, your own body, and the, the amazing things that you can do, not what somebody else can do. We, by doing this, by getting caught in that, you know, hamster wheel of comparison, you start to negatively, you know, view and talk about your body to yourself. You start looking in the mirror and saying things like, you know, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not lean enough, I'm not muscular enough, I'm, you know, I'm too big, I'm too old looking, whatever the thing is. Um, even young kids do this now at a very young age and it's it's really sad to say, I don't, again, social media, it's, it's, a, it's a gift and a curse, it's, it's amazing in a lot of respects, but it can fuck you up if you're not prepared for it and if you're not mature enough to, to go about it the right way. And we find ourselves, you know, and what I guess what I'm saying is we find things in ourselves that we're not happy with in our bodies. And 
again, like I mentioned, we stand in front of the mirror and we focus on these trouble spots and we stare at them and we put them under a microscope and we analyze them every inch, every line, every blemish we can see. And again, it creates this negative loop pattern in your head that you can't get out of. And then every time you walk by the mirror, you focus on the three things that you hate about yourself, not the 3000 things you should fucking love about yourself. And you gotta be honest with yourself. You know, we've all done this, you know, look in the mirror and compare and pinch and grab parts of our body. Um, I think everybody's probably guilty of it, but it is an insane practice to stand in front, you know, of the mirror naked, looking at your stomach and your butt and your legs and your chest and your arms, being overly critical and feeding your head with negative ideas and thoughts. And what I can tell you guys today with 100% certainty is this, there is no, you know, final destination. Uh, on the road to to loving your body inside and out it's an endless journey you know from you know womb to tomb if you will uh you know and somewhere along the way you got to stop the insanity and you have to really enjoy and appreciate and love your body for what it is and all the badass things it can do and we can always work on the things that we wish to change so if you want to you know be ripped like rambo and you want to you know have abs and the perfect ass whatever that is and you can go grind for that and, and you can work your ass off and you can train and you can eat right and you can move your body with purpose daily, but you have to appreciate it and love it along the way. You have to enjoy the journey of that process to get there. Otherwise you're never gonna make it because it's too hard and you're gonna quit. And you have to appreciate every single step. Don't work hard for six months and still be talking shit to yourself like you did on day one. You've put six months of work and there's been great progress made there. Just because you're not exactly where you want to be, you have to love it every step of the way because newsflash, you're probably never going to get to where you want to be because it's always changing. It's always moving. It's always evolving. And that's what life is. And that's okay. Body comparison is a cancer. It can kill happiness. It can rob you guys of your uniqueness. And it's these comparisons to others that make us think and act and do really stupid, foolish things. It creates a horrible image of how we see ourselves, uh, which builds this kind of internal tension in how we see our bodies. Don't underappreciate and underestimate the power and the beauty and the strength of the current body that you have right now today. Even if it's not perfect and you don't love exactly where you're at, maybe you've been bullshitting for a couple of months or the pandemic fucked up your routine, which obviously happened to all of us, but you have to really appreciate where it is today and even if it's not perfect or it's not ideal, we can still work to change the things that we wanna change. It's our differences that make us all truly unique and truly special. So when you wake up tomorrow, promise me this, you'll stop comparing yourself to the world, you'll stop putting yourself down, you'll start saying positive things to yourself, you'll start being confident in your body, you will not spend another fucking second wishing to look like somebody else. That is insanity. You cannot do that anymore. You have to really understand you have far more strengths and things going for you than weaknesses. And when you accept this, and when you understand like the journey to getting the things you want and looking and moving and feeling the way you want to is yours and yours alone, then you'll start to become happy. And that's when you're gonna to start to become successful and really ultimately loving yourself in the process. And so you have to embrace and love your body and understand that it's the most amazing possession you're ever gonna have. It's the most beautiful, badass thing that you will ever fucking own. So you gotta love your body and you gotta love your life and you have to embrace it whether you're big or small and overly muscular or you don't have enough muscle or if your ass is too big or your stomach's too fat or whatever your thing is, you just have to appreciate what it is today and you can work healthily and happily to change it moving forward. But you can't be your own worst enemy. You can't be your own worst critic. And you can't negatively talk to yourself every single day about the things you hate. And you can't dread the journey and the process to getting there because then you'll never get there. Because it's too fucking hard and you'll quit along the way before you see any real results. So you have to give yourself a pat on the back for wins and understand when you're bullshitting yourself and you're not putting in the work and then appreciate the effort you do put in when you're selling out to the process along the way. So again, uh, we touched on some of these things before in previous podcasts, but I do think that 
they're vitally important because with the world as it is today, we are doing a lot of comparison and again, young girls, young guys, shit, even older people are still getting on these social media platforms and looking at everybody, you know, wishing they had their body and seeing things. And, and a lot of times it just isn't real and it's not realistic. And you have to understand progress is made in a lot of these things over the course of years, not just months. Everybody wants results in two seconds. You guys have heard me talk about it before. It literally is a crock pot. It's not a microwave. And you can make massive changes in three months and six months, but you'll make even more changes in three years and six years. That's why you have to find something that is sustainable um, for your lifestyle so the goals become attainable. And so you can get to where you want to go and more importantly, not just get there, but sustain it and keep making progress and keep moving forward. And again, not focusing on every little imperfection along the way. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself a pat on the fucking back for putting in effort and trying. And know if you keep working and you keep moving forward and you stay positive with it, things are going to change. And you'll have good days and you'll have bad days. And you'll have some setbacks and there's ups and downs. There's peaks and valleys. And that's normal. That's called life. That's where growth happens. That's how change happens. But if you consistently over time make the right choice, you're going to win. It doesn't matter what you guys do some of the time. It matters what you do most of the time. So if you're consistently eating real food, if you're consistently training right and sleeping right and doing the things you need to do to get you where you want to go, you will get there. Probably not as quick as you want. It never fucking happens that way. But if you put your nose to the grindstone and you keep doing the right things, it will happen. So again... Hopefully you guys appreciate that quick rant. It's, it's nothing complex. It's nothing that you don't know. It's just something if you've been talking shit about yourself and you're not happy with where you're at today, just stop doing that. Slow down. Step away from the mirror. Get off the scale and just say, hey, I got this. I'm going to keep doing the things I have to do and I'm going to keep making a little progress one day at a time. Worry about Saturday, then focus on Sunday, then get to Monday, then get to Tuesday, and then the next week, and then the next month and so on. That's all any of us can do. Make one better eating choice today. Make one better training choice tomorrow. Take care of ourselves. Appreciate the gifts that you do have. Look at your positive attributes. You can work on changing the things you don't like. And again, be your own biggest cheerleader. Be your own biggest fan. Because the world is hard enough as it is, and uh, there's no need to make it harder on yourself, especially when it comes to loving your body and loving your life. Because it is an amazing gift, and it's a beautiful machine. And a lot of people don't appreciate it. I don't want to get on a serious note before I go, but there is people laying in fucking hospital beds. There's people who are paralyzed. There's people who have cancer. And there's people who are never going to walk and jump and run and skip again. And they would trade places with you in a heartbeat to have a little bit of your cellulite, to have a little bit of fat uh, on your ass that you do, to maybe not have perfect arms or a chest or shoulders. But if they could do all the things that you could do, they would be so goddamn happy. They would be elated beyond anything you could believe. And you're taking something for granted that you never should. So again, don't hate the things that are not perfect. Appreciate it for what it is today. And if you keep doing the right thing, it's only gonna get better from here. I promise you that. I appreciate you guys as always. Again, this podcast is brought to you by my homies at Athletic Greens, athleticgreens.com slash Jeremy Scott. You can get a year's supply of free vitamin D and five free travel packs with order one, or hit me up and I'll send you a travel pack. You can try it and then get hooked up with all of the free stuff. Again, if you guys are on Apple Podcasts and you listen to this, uh, drop it a five-star, leave some comments. I truly would appreciate it. If you think this podcast could help a friend or friend member or somebody who struggles with body image issues and body love issues, please send this to them. Um, a lot of people need to hear it, and they need to stop doing this negative bullshit to themselves because it's not doing them any good, uh, and, and it really does the world a disservice if people are not happy with uh, the body that they're trapped in, especially when it's healthy and it's functional. Um, I see a lot of people um, living in a, in a state of mind they don't have to live in. So please share this with them. I think the casket effect you can have by doing that is going to go a lot further than you can even imagine. And if you guys like this, retweet it, reshare it, throw it up on uh, Instagram too. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys. And so love your body, love your life, man. Because it's, it's the most uh, important and precious thing that you're ever going to own. So I appreciate you guys as always. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you as well. And uh, I'll bring Heather on the podcast tomorrow. We're going to dive deep into some things that hopefully provide you with some value. But hopefully this fired you up uh, to not be a negative asshole to yourself and just be a positive, badass cheerleader 
in where you're at and everywhere you're going to go. So until next time, eat well, train hard, be nice to people. And please, you guys, keep doing shit you love with people you enjoy because your life is too short not to. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.